get quickly into the word and uh, just uh, give an exposition on the anointing. Somebody shout the anointing. Say it like you mean it. Say the anointing. Um, in the morning, we did um, a little, we studied a bit on the anointing, what the anointing is. We've actually finished with the definition of the anointing. And then we are going higher into other dimensions of the anointing. And um, I want you to be connected, and I know you shall be tremendously blessed. Hallelujah. Yeah, let me run a few things through. Um, the anointing, I said, in the Greek means Creo, in the Hebrew means Makshaya. And um, the anointing, the word anointing or the word Makshaya has a fourfold meaning. Somebody say fourfold meaning. In other words, it's one word with four different meanings. The first meaning is means when you say someone is anointed, it means the person is set apart for a divine use. Somebody has been set apart or consecrated for a special divine assignment. The second thing I said is that when you're anointed, it simply means that you have been empowered to accomplish a specific task. You can be anointed to preach. You can be anointed to sing. You can be anointed to do ministry, to do business. You can be anointed even for marriage. Everything that you find yourself doing, there is an anointing that can come upon your life for it. Amen? Yeah. And the third meaning of the anointing, I said, when we say you are anointed, it means you cannot be harmed. Somebody say, I cannot be harmed. When an anointing comes upon your life, it's a sign that evil should not and cannot come to you. And I explain it a bit more in detail this morning, um, using David as an example, using Saul, I beg your pardon, as an example, that Saul went through the garrison of the Philistines, but he could not be harmed. Saul went through the enemy's camp, soldiers surrounding him, but none of them could temper with his life. Why? Because he carried an anointing. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest thing you need to pray for daily is an anointing. Somebody shout an anointing. When you ask God for an anointing or when an anointing comes upon your life, yes, witches will try to attack you, but they cannot do anything to you. Arrows will be shot from wherever to you, but it cannot harm you. That is the benefit of the anointing. The fact that you are in the midst of war, but you are still preserved. You are in the midst of attacks, but you are still what? Protected. That is the benefit of the anointing. And uh, last week, I shared on um, what happens when the anointing comes upon you in the book of First um, Samuel chapter 9 into 10. And then today I want to take it from a different angle. Let's go with me if you would. One, there was something else you need to know about the anointing. Let's go with me if you would to the book of Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. I'm continuing a bit from where I left off this morning. I said to you, the last statement I made in the morning is that when David committed a sin and he was praying to God, he told the Lord, Father, you can take everything, but do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. In other words, Lord, you can take everything else from me, but not my anointing. And uh, one thing that you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that when everything in your life is attacked, the only thing that remains is the anointing. And when there is an anointing upon your life, the anointing has the capacity to restore everything that you lose. And I always say the blessing of God is not in the physical possessions you have. The blessing of God is within. Somebody say the blessing of God is within. Now shout it like your voice is here. Say the blessing of God is within. 
What does that mean? What that simply means is that if I decide to close this church today and go to Nakuru and start another church, I will still succeed. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is not in what is here. If the devil takes all my houses, all my cars, everything I own, and I begin to start from zero, I will still succeed. Why? Because the blessing of God on my life is not in what I have, it's in what is within. Are you getting me? So the blessing of the Lord is not in the possessions you carry. The blessing of the Lord is in us. That is why when you read the scriptures, I mean, the other day, there's, there's, um, um, Solomon said that the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he has no sorrow to it. It is the blessing of the Lord that brings to you every other thing else that you desire. When the blessing of the Lord comes upon your life, it draws to you everything else that you desire. So when an anointing of God is upon your life, the anointing of the Lord draws to you everything else that you need to survive. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yeah. So if you are to take the scripture and replace it with, with the anointing. Now let's go into, give me um, Proverbs 10. Give me from um, NIV. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 22. Um, shall we read one go? No, read it one go. Mm hmm Again, again, now if you replace the word blessing with the anointing, replace it and read it one go. In the morning, we understood that when you're anointed, God confers prosperity on you, isn't it? Or you've forgotten. You remember, those of you that were in the morning or at least you watched online, that when the anointing of God is upon your life, the anointing of God activates prosperity upon you. So the blessing of the Lord or the anointing of the Lord brings wealth and it has no sorrow to it. When the anointing of the Lord is upon your life, the anointing of the Lord has the capacity to bring to you wealth. Now, many years ago, I went to preach for Father in the Lord. And um, after preaching for the father in the Lord, I mean, he had sent me somewhere to preach. And um, after preaching for him, watch me carefully. Um, you see, when you go to minister, um, somewhere, sometimes they bless you. So after preaching for him, a week later, he called me and told me, I did a whole week conference, and he told me to come to his house. So I went to his house, and then he asked me to go to his bedroom. And I went to his bedroom. He says, when you go to my bedroom, on the bedside table, there, is, there are two things there. There is a bottle of oil and there's an envelope with money. Pick one and come. One of them is for you. Just pick any one that you want. And as a young preacher, very active and very, I was very broke that time. <laughs> so I went to the bedroom and I saw the envelope was open. You know the way the Money can be put in an envelope and you can see what is in. It was sliding. Dollars were sliding out of the envelope. And I saw this funny olive oil on the bedside table. So, and the choice, the option was for me to choose. Say, choose one and bring. So, I looked my first, me being me, I was gravitated first towards what? The money. Hallelujah. So, I almost picked the money and I said I stood there for a long time and I said money or your money or your money or your so he screamed said David said sir says are you there I said yes I said, I said I'm coming I was still contemplating whether to pick the money or to pick the oil but this is what I've realized all of a sudden my spiritual senses were activated and I could see the money in the oil. So I picked the oil and I left. So when I went there, he told me, David, you have chosen right. So he poured the oil on me and said, from today, may you never lack any good thing Amen. that you desire. 
And from that day, I have never lacked any good thing, including money. Now, the point I'm trying to make you understand is this. By the pouring of that oil on my life, good things began to follow me. Are you getting me? Yes. Blessings began to follow me. Opportunities began to follow me. Doors began to open unto me. Why? Because now there was an anointing, an impartation had come upon my life. When you read the book of Songs of Solomon, Songs of Solomon, the Bible says, um, and the Bible says, the anointing, because of the oil, the maidens love you. In other words, the anointing attracts people. You see, uh, there are many people that may like you, not because really they like you, because there is an anointing on your life. It is written in the Bible that because you carry an anointing, people will like you. So the anointing of the Lord when it comes upon your life, it attracts both the good and the bad. Are you hearing me? In the morning I made you understand that when when Saul, when Saul was anointed, uh-huh, now let's read I love that. Let's read the scripture. Songs of Solomon 1, 3. Now let's read one, go. Uh-huh. This, this version is really watered down the scripture but, but let's still read one go because of the fragrance it says in simple terms because of the fragrance that is coming out of the oil that has been poured upon your life the virgins love you because of the fact that you carry oil, the virgins what? Yes. Mm-hmm. The amplifier. Let's read what the amplifier says. One go. Yes. Because of the aroma of your oils. Because, in other words, when an anointing or oil is poured on you, it attracts even maidens. Amen? It attracts any very good thing. Every good thing that you desire, the anointing attracts. Somebody say, shout, the anointing attracts. Shout, he say, the anointing attracts. So, when an anointing is poured upon your life, everything that you have, you can lose it. You see, the, having the anointing doesn't mean the devil will not attack you. Having the anointing guarantees you victory in the midst of the attack. Let me take it again. Having an anointing on your life does not mean you will not be attacked. Having an anointing is a sign that even when the attacks come, you will stand Amen. and you will break through. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. An anointing assures you of the Father. David was the king that fought so many battles in the land of Israel. And David never lost a battle. He never lost a battle. Why? Because he carried an anointing. To an extent that when Saul died in battle, David said, why has Saul died like a man that has not been anointed with oil? In other words, in those days, when men were anointed with oil, they don't die ordinary death. Can I tell you something? Yes, yes it doesn't matter what the enemy brings you away. You cannot die premature. Amen. Why? Because you carry an anointing. When an anointing is upon your life, you cannot die ordinary death. Evil cannot just come to you. Why? Because there is oil on your head. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. I cannot die premature. I cannot die premature. Why? Because I carry an anointing. So they say because I carry an anointing. Because I carry an anointing. Say because I carry an anointing. Because I carry an anointing. Yes, because you carry an anointing, you cannot die ordinary death. You cannot die premature. Shall I believe that? Now let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go to now. Go with me to Genesis 8. I'm our main scripture for today. I'm just trying to introduce Genesis 8, reading from verse 6 to 11. It's going to get interesting right here. Genesis chapter 8, verse 6 to 11. Shall we read one? Go read from the top of your voice. One go. Uh-huh. Mm. 
Ajá. Ajá. And no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. Now let's go back to verse 6. Now the Bible talks about, this scripture talks about the story of Noah. Somebody said the story of Noah. The story of Noah. Now the Bible says that it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark. We all know the ark. Now the ark of Noah was a typology of the church. I want you to listen to me so that you don't miss any revelation. And next week I'm going to continue from the ark. I'll still be preaching about the ark. Amen. I mean, next week's second service, as God gives us grace. And now, the ark of Noah is a typology of the church. Now, the ark of Noah, the Bible says, um, God instructed Noah to make an ark as according to a certain dimension. And uh, before, when God told Noah to prepare the ark, it was not raining. But the idea or the main reason was that a time was going to come that God said he was going to destroy the entire earth with rain, with a flood. But anybody that entered the ark was going to be preserved. Now flood, as we've all known and those that have followed me for quite some time, is a typology of an attack. The Bible says that the enemy will come out against you like a flood. But the spirit of God will raise up what? A standard against against the enemy. So anytime you see flood in a dream, in a vision, or most of the time in the scriptures, it's a symbolic representation of an attack that was meant to come. So God says he's going to um, destroy the entire earth with a flood. The only people that are going to be kept are the people that were in that will be in the earth. Now, in the church of God or in the house of God, the body of Christ, it, 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 the, the house of God or the church building is a typology of an ark. In other words, anybody that was outside of the ark could be destroyed by the flood. But as long as you are in the ark, it didn't matter how bad it was, you are what? preserved and protected. What it simply means is that in the ark, point number two, even though in the ark there were lions in the ark, there were antelopes in the ark, there was the mouse in the ark, there was the cat in the ark, there was the snake in the ark, all forms of species of animals were in the ark. But guess what? None of them hurt each other. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Nobody died in the ark. It was not recorded anywhere that anybody died in the ark in the 40 days and 40 nights that they were in the ark. Were there some confusion? Possibly, yes. Were there certain things that possibly happened? Yes. But just because of the fact that they had been instructed by God to be in the ark, none of them died died but if they were outside of the ark the lion will catch the antelope and feed on the antelope the cats will prey on the mouse somehow one animal will feed on the other but as long as they were in the ark none of the animals could be used as a prey what am i trying to say bringing it to the house of god as long as you are connected to an altar the enemy cannot pray on you Amen. if you are outside of the ark what happens to you cannot be guaranteed but if you are in the ark you are assured that it doesn't matter what happens you shall be preserved are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, as long as you are connected to an altar, the enemy cannot strike you just like that. Not until he receives permission from Jehovah. If you are connected to an altar and a prayerful altar like this, there is no way. Do you know as in the olden days when somebody was to be arrested and the person runs into the temple, even police was not allowed to arrest people in the church. 
I don't even know whether it's still the same these days. <laughs> I hear these days they can't even arrest you from the altar. In the olden days, the police could not even arrest it as long as the person is inside the church. They have to wait for the person to close the church. And when, 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 when Joab defected from David, and he was, he was being looked for to be killed. The Bible says Joab ran and held the altar of God. And as long as he was holding on to the horns of the altar, he could not be killed. In the olden days, if any evil thing happens to you and you run and held the altar, that is it. Nobody could touch you. As long as you were holding the altar, you were preserved, you were protected, you were secured. Can I tell you something? May Jehovah God preserve your life. Amen. May you be protected. Amen. May you be secured. Amen. By the very fact that you are connected to an altar. Amen. May the blood of Jesus be a seal and a cover over your life. Amen. If you are here, shout I receive it. I receive shout it. I receive it. I receive Number two, have that assurance that as long as you are in a certain act called Grace Arena, no evil can come close to you. Amen. As long as they were in the ark of Noah, they could not be harmed. Likewise, as long as you are in this ark of grace arena, no evil can come close to your house, to your children, to your home. In the name of Jesus, tell your neighbor, I'm in the ark. I am in the ark. Say, I am in the ark. I am in the ark. Shari, say, I am in the ark. I am in the ark. I am covered. I am covered. Protected. Protected. And secured. And secured. Let me tell you, when they were out of the ark, the lion could easily prey on the antelope. When they were outside the ark, immediately the mouse sees the cat, it will be running away. Why? Because the cat will prey on the mouse. But in the ark, I see the mouse walking around and the cat goes like, oh, and the mouse goes like, sir, I am in the ark of God. If I was outside of the ark, you could touch me and eat me. But right now that I am in the ark, I am untouchable. I, I am indestructible. No one can touch me. The mouse will walk in front of the cat and no, nothing could happen. An antelope will walk in front of the lion and the lion will just watch and it will pass. Why? Because they were in the ark. In the ark, you have divine security. In the ark, you have divine divine protection in the ark no weapon formed against you shall prosper as long as you are in the ark you are secured you are covered you are protected i want you to know it doesn't matter what the enemy try to do imagine you being in the ark and say because the lion want to eat you the lion is trying to pull you out of the ark because if it's my oh my god i feel like preaching to someone if it manages to pull you outside of the ark guess what you are finished if it doesn't eat you another lion will destroy you but the devil is a liar i refuse to come out of the ark yeah. as i stay in this ark yes. i will not allow any lion yes. anybody to pull me out yes. of the ark yeah. why because in the ark you are covered yeah. in the ark you are preserved yeah. in the ark you are protected yes. in the ark you are secure yes are you getting me yes the lion could not eat anybody in the ark the mouse could not touch any, um, the cat could not touch any mouse in the, in the ark. Why? Because I, in the ark, you are under divine instruction. Somebody say divine instruction. Divine instruction. The mouse is, the cat is told to shut up, not touch anybody. And the mouse is also told, and the, the, the lion is also told to shut up. Because the only way the lion would get an antelope was outside of the ark and not in the ark. Say in the name of Jesus. I refuse to leave the ark of God. I refuse to leave the ark of God. See, the enemy has a way of leaving you slowly outside the ark because the devil knows once you are in the ark, you become what? Vulnerable to anything and to anybody. Say in the name of Jesus, the name of by Jesus. the power of the Holy Ghost, the the I decree and declare, and declare in, this ark, in this ark, I am secure. I am secure. Now, read, give me first Kings. Thank you. Give me the scripture even before. First Kings chapter 2, verses 28. Now, read it from the top of your voice. One go. Uh huh. 
Now, Joab was David's military uh, um, main guy. Are you hearing me? Are you getting me? Yes. Joab was David's military main guy. His, his, his army, his, his, his bodyguard. Joab was among the men that would run through the troop troop and break through the camp. Joab was David's guy. If Joab was called, everybody can be killed. He was a soldier. A man David could trust. But some way, somehow, the Bible says Joab defected to Adonijah. And though he had not defected to Absalom, and so Joab fled the temple to the temple. When David heard that Joab had defected, you know what the David did? I mean, he gave a directive that Joab was to be killed. So, do you know what Joab did? The Bible says Joab fled to the tabernacle of the Lord and took hold of the horns of the altar. Why? As long as anybody held the horns of the altar, the person could not be touched. Amen. Are you getting me? Yes. He know that he has gotten information that the king wants to kill him. Even the king could not touch him as long as he's holding on to the horns of the altar. Can I bring it home for you to understand? Yes. It doesn't matter the army, the military strength, the capacity yes. of the enemy against you. Yes. As long as you can hold on to the altar. Yes. I came to tell you nobody can destroy you. Amen. I said no one can touch you. Amen. Tell your neighbor, 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 I am holding on to the horns of the altar. I am holding on to the horns of the altar. I am holding on to the horns of the altar. Yes. I cannot be touched. I cannot be destroyed. Yes. I cannot be attacked. Yes. I know the battles will come yes. but as long as I hold on to the horns of the altar and number two let me dwell on the ark before before we go on to what happened outside of the ark you see when God gave an instruction the instruction was that in seven days every body both man and beast was to get into the ark do you know the story at least you went into Sunday school so, imagine God giving an instruction like that. I believe that it was not fair. Anyway, God is not fair. Oh, you don't know. He's, God is just, but he's not fair. Ah, let me tell you. T tell me where God is fair. He says, Jacob, I love. Esau, I hated. They were in their mother's womb. They were not born. He says, I love one. I hate another one. What had those children done? Is that fair? If God was fair, some of you, you have big, big degrees like a thermometer. You should be any more money. But the one possibly deciding your paycheck has not possibly been to school. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. God is just, but he's not fair. He has never been fair and he will never be. So you have to get used to it. Okay, maybe one day I'll, I'll just preach on that. The fairness of God. If God was fair, even you, you will not be here. Some of the people you went to school with, they were more intelligent than you, but you are better than them right now. I get me. Some of you used to chop last. 80. If there are 49 people, you are 48, 47. You, are, you, are, you will just make sure you beat somebody so that at least you don't carry the class. But right now, look at you. See what the Lord has done. Are you getting me? The one that used to be first, 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 first. He's still struggling. Anyway, let me continue. Let me continue. Let me continue. So, God gave seven days for all animals to get into it. How do you give a horse seven days to get into an ark and a tortoise seven days to get into the ark? No, are you getting me? How do you get, give um, a lion seven days to run into the ark and a snail seven days to run into the ark? They were all given exactly the same time. But can I tell you something? It doesn't matter who started the journey first or who got into the ark first. Everybody got into the ark. Can I tell you something? Sometimes it looks like some people have advantage than you. But guess what? As long as heaven's voice is upon your life, whatever Jehovah God has decided for, to come your way, it shall come your way. If God has said you will get to the top, let them go ahead. They are like the horses. Imagine God said, everybody gets in the ark. The horse will gallop go, 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 in the ark. He enters the ark. And the snail was coming. And possibly another horse meet the snail. Say, where are you going? I'm going to the ark. Say, with this walking. 
By the time you get there, they will close the door. But can I tell you something? When you are under divine instruction, yes, it doesn't matter who goes ahead of you. Hey, hey, it hey, doesn't hey. matter who runs ahead of you. Yes. The hand of God will surely make sure you also enter into the ark. Amen. If God has said you, you have a wedding, even if you are 55, yes. it can happen. Amen. Oh my God. If hey. God has said you, you also go to America. It doesn't matter who goes hey, first hey. or who goes last. As long as you are under divine instruction, yes. the word of God concerning your life will surely come yeah. to pass. Yeah. Imagine yeah. God giving a snail and a tortoise seven days and giving a horse and a lion seven days to run a race. But guess what? Eventually, at the end of the seventh day, all of them were in the ark. Hey. I lift a prayer over your life. Yes. It doesn't matter who has gone ahead of you. Yes. It doesn't matter who holds a bigger position than you. Yes. What God has declared yes. over your life, yes. over your family, yes. I declare it shall come to pass. Come to pass. I said it shall 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 come to pass. If you are here, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Give your neighbor a high five. He said, neighbor, I am late. I may be late, but I'm coming. I may be delayed, but I'm coming. I am under divine instruction. Just watch out, watch out, watch out. Before you realize, I shall be the head. I shall be the head before you realize the word of the Lord concerning my life shall begin to manifest. If you are here, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Tell your neighbor, I am coming. I am coming. No, no, shout it like you mean it. Say, I am coming. I am coming. Yeah. You shall get there. Tell your neighbor, I will get there. I will get there. Yeah, it looks like sometimes when you know that you are you have got so much potential but it looks like others have gone ahead of you and you begin to wonder and when will my own turn also come when will i also become a boss when will i also buy a good car when will i also own my own house as long as you are in the divine instruction the word of god concerning you shall come to pass Amen. i said the word of god concerning your life shall come to I pass receive. if you are here shout i receive it i receive it you see when people succeed and you know and you know you could have done it better or you have the qualities to soar on to and to rise and they are ahead of you ladies and gentlemen it can bring depression to your heart but just know as long as God commanded it, yes. it shall come to pass. Amen. I said it shall come to pass. Amen. I said it shall come to pass. Amen. The Bible says God's way, God says he will not even utter a dot of the word of God. A dot, a comma, in the word of God concerning you. Every single word that God has spoken concerning your life, he will not even utter a comma out of that. If you are here, shout, I receive that. I receive that. He says, I am the Lord. My covenant will I not break. Neither will I utter that which has gone out of my lips. He said in Hebrews 6, 18, the Bible says, by two imitable things, it is impossible for Jehovah to lie. Every sure word of God concerning your life, I declare it shall manifest. Amen. Shout and say, I, it shall manifest. Shout and say, it shall manifest. Shout and say, it shall manifest. In the name of Jesus. 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 I may be late, but I'm coming. It, it looks like some of them have gone ahead, but I am coming. Because see, when you get um, 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 a car and it is 2024 model, we call it what? The latest. Somebody say the latest. Say the latest. Now, if you remove the ST from it, it's called what? It becomes what? Late, isn't it? In other words, something that looks latest today within the shortest possible time, can be late. So when somebody is celebrating their testimony, celebrating their breakthrough, celebrating, and you have, yours have not come, just wonder, just remember, it can surely be late. Yours is about to come. As long as you can hold on to God, that testimony that they are testifying, you are next in line for a testimony. If you are here, shout, I receive that. I receive that. Shout it, say, I receive that. I receive shout it, say, I receive that. I receive it. Now, let's, go, let's continue with, the, um, with, with Genesis. Now, the Bible says, verse 6, so it came to pass at the end of the 40 days, that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made and he sent out a raven 
Now, next week, I'm excited about next week's sermon because I already have it. I'm actually introducing next week's sermon today. Next week's afternoon service. Oh, my God. It's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be exciting. Tell anybody, it's going to be exciting. I'm just trying to introduce the ravens. Now, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Now, Noah opened the ark and let out a raven. Somebody shout a raven. Next week, I'll explain what a raven is and why even a raven was asked to feed Elijah at the brook Cherub. Now, let me just drop it here and I'll connect it to Noah and the fact that this raven, this raven that Noah sent out of the ark. The Bible says, with the, he sent out a raven which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried from there. So he, uh-huh, next verse. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Now, when he sent the raven, the raven didn't come back. Are you hearing me? The raven went to and fro, but now he decided now to send a dove. Somebody shout a dove. Now follow me. But now the dove was, they could not find a resting place for its foot. So guess what? The dove returned into the ark. Are you hearing me? And he drew her into the ark himself. That is Noah drew the dove into the ark himself. Now verse 10. Now let's look at what is going on here. But And when he waited another seven days. Somebody say another seven days. Seven. And again he sent that another dove from the ark. So the first dove went and couldn't find a place because there was water everywhere and everything was flooded. Now the second dove went and again he sent a, and, and again he sent the dove out of the ark. Uh -huh, verse 11. Then the dove came back. Now follow this, this story very well. The dove now came back in the evening and behold, what has happened? Was in the mouth, was in the, in the in her mouth, and no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. Now follow this closely. The first dove went and couldn't find a place, so the dove came back. But the second dove went, and the only thing the second dove could find was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Everything had been destroyed. It because of the flood. The only thing that remained after the flood was the olive tree. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Do you believe in what the Bible says? Yes. That God destroyed everything with the flood. So my question is, if God destroyed everything with the flood, why was the olive tree still standing? Are you getting me? Yes. God destroyed everything with the flood. But the olive tree was still standing. Why? The reason why the olive tree had to stand is because in this life, if everything else is destroyed, the only thing that will remain is your anointing. Amen. With your anointing, you can get everything else back. You can get your house back, your car back, your, 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 your business back, your job back, your marriage back. It doesn't matter what the enemy takes from you. As long as you can keep your oil, you can maintain your anointing. Everything else can be restored. Amen. The only thing that the, the, uh, the dove came with, with the, oh, is the olive leaf. Everything else was destroyed, but the olive tree still stood. Can I tell you something? Yes. If you can preserve your anointing, it doesn't matter what the enemy shall do. It doesn't matter what shall come out against you. Yes. You shall be preserved. I, I said you shall be preserved. I, I said you shall be preserved. I, I said you shall be preserved. If you are here, shall I receive it? I receive it. When everything else went down, the olive tree, because it's from the olive tree that we get the olive oil that is one of the main components of making the anointing oil. So God realized that I will destroy everything else. But the only thing I dare not touch is the olive tree. Because with the olive tree, the people can come back. When Noah comes out of the ark, they are able to generate oil that is able to replicate and reproduce everything else that has been destroyed. Oh, I wish I came to church. Oh, you are lost. Are you getting me? God needed to preserve the olive tree. Because after that, oil needed to be produced. 
to bring back anything else that the enemy stole. I make a prayer over your life. Yes. By the anointing on your life. Yes. I decree and declare. Yes. May anything the enemy has stolen. Yes. I declare that may it come back. Amen. I said 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 may it come back. If you are here, shout I receive it. Shout I receive it. Shout I receive it. Shout I receive. I receive. Because of the oil that is on your head. Anything you lose, just know that it shall come back. As long as your anointing remains. I said in the morning, if there is anything you need to pray for daily, is the anointing of God. Father, give me anointing in, in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Anointing in my field of operation. Anointing in my home. Anointing to manage this. Anointing. I need the anointing, the grace, the supernatural power of God that comes upon a man to do and to accomplish. That is the anointing. It is an anointing, it is a power that comes upon you to make you be able to do things easily. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. May that anointing be released upon your life. I receive. I said, may an anointing be released upon your life. I receive. I said, may an anointing be released upon your life. I receive. I said, may an anointing be released upon your life. If you are here, shout and receive it. I I said, shout I receive. I receive. Shout I receive. I receive it. When an anointing is upon your life, whatever it is, when Saul got anointed by Samuel, the first thing Samuel told Saul is that the donkeys that you have lost, you shall hear that they have been found. An anointing of God has got restoration capabilities. It helps you, it helps you to restore everything and anything that the enemy takes away from you. And this night, I mean, this um, evening, we are going to pray. That Amen. by the reason of the anointing, may Jehovah restore us. Amen. May Jehovah restore your honor. Amen. May he restore your glory. Amen. May he restore your lost glory. Amen. May he restore the honor you used to have. Yes. May God bring you to a place of favor. Anything that the enemy stole from you, yes. by the reason of the oil, yes. I decree and declare that may heaven restore it. Amen. I said may heaven restore it. I, I said may heaven restore it. I, I said may heaven restore it. If you are here, shout I receive it. I receive it. The anointing can restore. Say the anointing restores. The anointing restores. The anointing restores everything and anything that the enemy takes away from you. Amen. And you see, I said to you, every one of us has what? Has what? Anointing. Everyone, every one of us is what? Anointed. Yes, I said in the morning, every one of us is anointed. We all carry an anointing. All that you need is command the act the activation of that anointing that is upon your life that it shall begin to work for you it shall begin to work for you and you pray everyone the level of anointing you carry is different from the level of anointing i carry the level of anointing um, um lawrence carries is different from the level of anointing um, um elder zablon carries we all have a dimension of the oil what you need to do like we were singing in the morning father let our anointing overflow Amen. Somebody said the overflowing power of the anointing. The overflowing power yeah, of the that anointing. God will make you overflow in the anointing. That every grace and every benefit of the oil shall begin to work in your life. Now go with me to First John chapter two as I close. First John chapter two, reading from verses twenty. Let's take that from the amplifier. First John chapter two, verses twenty. First John two. First John two. It's okay. Uh -huh. Let's read one go. Now you you shall we read one go? Again. Now he's talking to you. He didn't say you will have an anointing. He said you have an anointing. So you already have an anointing. Somebody shout, I have an anointing. I have an anointing. No, no, tell them. They, they think like you are, ordinary, you are an ordinary person. Tell, let them feel like you also, you carry something. Say, I have an anointing. I have an anointing. Yes, you have. The Bible says, you have an anointing from the Holy One. Amen? Amen. You have an anointing. Shout, I have an anointing. I have an anointing. Yes, that is one thing that you need to understand as I am about to close. There is an anointing you carry. There is a grace upon your life. So all you need to do is to pray for that anointing to grow and to increase. Amen. 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 That you shall walk in a deeper dimensions of the oil that is upon your life. 
Shout, I have an anointing. I have an anointing. Shout it like you mean it. Say, I have an anointing. I have an anointing. Yes, you need to understand that you have an anointing and it is permanent. Say, my anointing is permanent. My anointing is permanent. Say, my anointing cannot be taken away from me. My anointing cannot be taken away from me. Shout it again. Say, my anointing cannot be taken away from me. My anointing cannot be taken away from me. Yes, another thing that you need to understand is that the anointing of God in you cannot be taken away from you by nobody. The yeah. devil can't take it. Even God himself says he will never take it from you. Yes. It is in scripture. Yes. Go to verse 27 of the same place. Shall we read one go? Shall we read one go? Again, let's take it up. Okay, omit the first bracket so that you can, and the first bracket, the first, so that you can read it faster. One go. As for you, the anointing which you have received rem from him remains what? permanently in you. The, the him there is a capital H. That means who, uh, who is he referring to? Yes. So, the anointing which you have received from God remains how? Permanently in me. Say, my anointing is permanent. My anointing is permanent. See, let me tell you one thing. Most of the time, you hear people say things, um, maybe from the pulpit or from where, and you don't verify it. So you just embrace what they say without checking the scriptures to find out for yourself whether what they are saying is true. Are you getting me? Yes. And that is the error of the modern day church. Because what was said came from quote and unquote a man of God. Not until it can be substantiated with scripture, you can throw it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And you see, some say, oh, you lose your anointing. If you do this, you lose your anointing. Nobody is losing any anointing to anywhere. We are losing it to where? To go where? To who? How? Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. My anointing is permanent. My anointing is permanent. See, whatever you believe in, you believe in works for you. If you believe you, you can lose your anointing. Fair be it, as up to you. Me, I believe my anointing cannot be lost. The only thing it can do is that it can increase. Amen. Are you getting me? Yes, he says, the anointing which you have received remains permanently in you. That is what the word of God is saying. He said, the anointing which you have received from God, that's what? Remains how? How? Permanently in you. Shout, my anointing is permanent. Shout it, my anointing is permanent. Shout it, my anointing is permanent. My anointing is permanent. No, yeah, you so, say, Every one of us, we are gifted and we have graces in different dimensions. Somebody has an anointing for this. Another person has a grace for this. Another one has an anointing for that. All you need to do is that pray to God that the anointing you have received, it grows, it increases, it expands. It brings you to a place of fulfillment. Don't let the devil deceive you that your anointing is going. It is not going anywhere. It's going where? Nyeri or uh, Kisumu? Or, or Karatina? No. Tell your neighbor, my anointing is not going. My anointing is not going. Now give me Romans chapter 11 verses 29. And then we take some, some 89 and then we can, we can pray. We are going to pray through some 89 right now. All the things that the Bible said the anointing produces. Shall we read? One go. Now this is the word of God. Read the scripture from the top of your voice. One go. Uh-huh. What a word. What a scripture. Did you hear that? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says for the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Can you, are you understanding that? Yes. It cannot be revoked. Amen. The gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. And he explains it. He says for he does not withdraw 
what he has already given. Nor does he change his mind about whom he gives his grace and whom he sends his call. In other words, even if your father changes his mind or your mother changes his mind or your brother changes his mind as to what he wants to do for you, there is a man up there. His name is Jesus. Amen. He does not change his mind concerning you. Yes. He doesn't change his mind as to what he wants to do with your life yes. or do in you. Yes. And I want you to know that it doesn't matter what goes wrong or goes right the purposes of God concerning your life is intact and no demon can touch it no witchcraft can tamper yes. with it no sorcerer can touch it yes. for the bible said the gifts and the callings of God they are irrevocable he does not withdraw what he has given yes. neither does he change his mind on whom he gives it to Amen. so if you were told you will be a great woman. God is not changing his mind about Amen. that. If you were told that God has a great destiny for your life, it doesn't matter what the doctors tell you. Yes. God is not changing his mind about that. Amen. Oh, man of God, I messed up right here. Do you think he didn't know you messed up? He literally knew before he even he decided to anoint you. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, he says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, yes. I appointed tell you no he didn't say i knew you and i appointed you not just appointed you and approved of you mm, 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 mm. in other words even before you were here yes. jehovah god approved of you read the scripture one go he said before i formed you in the womb i knew you number one and approved of you yes so what it means is that before you appeared here on earth he knew that january 5th you misbehave january 10th you you get drunk and you look like you have lost your brains uh -huh. am i preaching at all yes he knew that you january and uh, february 14th you let a certain mumu confuse you mm. and take you to a very funny place uh -huh. he knew that march 18th you you mess up hey. But he still looked at you and said, John, mm -hmm. I am still for you. Amen. Can I pray for you? Yes. Can I tell you something? Yes. He says he does not withdraw. Hey. And that is one thing about the God I serve. Amen. He doesn't withdraw his mind. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't withdraw his giftings. Neither does he withdraw his callings. Yes. He said, before even you appeared in your mother's womb, I knew you and approved of you. Somebody say, I am divinely approved. I'm divinely I am approved. heavily endorsed. I'm heavily you have endorsed. an endorsement from Jehovah. Katu Palia Azunimi Kapaya. You are endorsed by God. No power can temper with the will and the purpose and the counsel of the Lord concerning your life before you appeared here heaven knew you. Amen. Before you showed up God knew you. Yes. That is saying, he says in Psalm 89. He said because my anointing is upon you my loving kindness will forever in other words, because my anointing is on you, my mercy will forever remain with you. In other words, if you didn't have the anointing, God doesn't need to show you mercy. Because, but because you have an anointing, and for his name's sake, he shall show you mercy. I, I said he shall show you mercy. I, I said he shall show you mercy. I, I said he shall show you mercy. I if you are here, shall I receive that? I receive it. Let's be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. Let's go to Psalm 89 quickly as we pray through. Psalm 89. I did read the scripture in the morning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Psalm 89. Verses 20. Give me from Amplified or Passion. Now, let's, let's take it from Amplified. Psalm 89 verses 20. Now, one, go. He said he has found who? He said he has found who? He has found who? Put your name there. He has found who? He has found David, my servant, with whom have I anointed with my holy... Oh. And when I look at this scripture, I said, God, so couldn't you find any better dude in Israel to anoint than David? <laughs> so there was no better guy, no nicer, more 
clean, pure, correct. Huh? You, God could not find somebody better than David. And if God says he knew David before he was born, that means God literally knew that one day this idiot, every, all men will go to war. The Bible says one day all men went to war and David was walking on the upper lattice of his palace. He saw a black woman having a shower and he called the black woman, finished her and killed the husband on top. And David went back to God crying. And then listen to the story. David went back to God crying, impregnated the woman. The woman conceived and the child died. And then the woman conceived again. That is not where the story is. What beats my mind and what makes me understand that the God we serve, he knows everything, is that when God wanted somebody else to sit on the throne of David, when David died, who did he choose? Solomon. Who was Solomon's mother? Bathsheba. Hey. Hey. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So God, you could not find any clean woman. David had other sons. He had a Jonita. He had um, 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 Abnom. He had um, Absalom, the most handsome boy in Israel. All of them were there. Now, the one God chooses to sit on the throne was a woman who came in last minute. The, there were so many controversies even concerning her life. But God still says, you are the one. Your, your son will be the one on the throne. Ladies and gentlemen, do you think God didn't know what he was doing? He knew. He knew. So just get to know. Yes. Even in the midst of the errors, yes. Jehovah shall cover you. Amen. I said in the midst of the errors, Jehovah shall what? Cover me. His mercy. says, I have found my servant David. With whom have I anointed with my holy oil? And, uh huh. We are praying through verse 21 to 29 before we leave here. So, brother, position yourself well. Number one, he says, my hands shall strengthen him. You are lifting up your voice. That it doesn't matter what shall come out against you this year. May heaven strengthen you. Amen. May you be empowered to wage war. David said, for you teach my hands to war. And my fingers to fight. You are telling the Lord, Father, teach my hands to war yes. and teach my fingers to battle. Yes. Strengthen me. It doesn't matter what comes out against me. Yes. Father, strengthen me. Yes. Father, strengthen me. Yes. Father, strengthen me. Yes. So hold on. If you don't get strength from God, certain battles can clear you out of the way. Certain challenges can beat you down. Oh, you are lifting up your voice. Yes. You are declaring in the name of Jesus. Yes. yes. The Father strengthen me. Strengthen, strengthen my hands to walk. And my fingers to fight. Come on, lift up your voice. <laughs> Rapalias, 
In the name of Jesus, give me verse 22. He said, The enemy will not outwit, outwit him. In other words, the enemies again they will not outsmart you. Amen. When your enemies are able to outsmart you, you are in danger. Amen. Nor the wicked man afflict or humiliate him. Yes, you are lifting up your voice. Father, yes. grant me divine sensitivity. Amen. See, when an enemy outwits you, they are able that means they have advantage over you. You are lifting up your voice. Say, Father, grant me divine sensitivity. Let it be that no enemy shall outsmart me. Amen. If there are people assigned against me to fight me, to contend against me, grant me grace that they shall not outwit me. Yes. And any wicked person assigned to afflict me, Father, let your judgment come upon that wicked man. Yes. Let your judgment come upon, upon that wicked person. Yes. Yes. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. <laughs> from before you and anybody that hates you he will strike them yes Amen. are you here yes you are praying this scripture on your adversaries yes. that anyone that stands as an adversary of Zion yes that may Jehovah God crush them crush Amen. them anyone that stands as an adversary of Zion yes you are releasing this word yes Psalm 89 yes. verses 23 yes. to be made manifest upon their lives yes say oh Lord, oh Lord. according to your word according in, to your Psalm word. 89, in Psalm 89 verses 23 verses your word says you will crush my adversaries I pray in the name of your son Jesus 
Jesus. Anybody who stands as an adversary to my destiny, anybody that is an adversary, I decree and declare, Father, strike them. 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 In the name of Jesus. Anybody that stands as an adversary to your destiny. Yes. May the judgment of God come upon them. Come upon them. I said, may the judgment of God come upon them. 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 We release the sword of God. Yes. We release the sword of God to strike every adversary of Zion in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 We decree and declare. Let every adversary of Zion be crushed today. 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 Right. We crash today. Right. We crash today. Right. In the name of Jesus. Verse 24. Uh -huh. Now. Again. Again. Let's read it again. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you are in the morning service, I said the word loving kindness means what? So replace it with mercy so that you will understand. See, loving kindness looks so much of a big word. Maybe if you, if you went, if your English teacher died early, you may not be able to understand what loving kindness means. So just put the simple basic term, basic word there, mercy. So my faithfulness and my steadfast mercy shall be with him. That is, God says his faithfulness and his steadfast loving kindness, his steadfast mercy shall be with me. Now, do you know what it means? Now, when the faithfulness of God is, even when you, you are, you are not doing it, he's doing it. Amen. When even you don't deserve it, he's still there. He's providing for you, even he's supporting you, he's standing, he's faithful, even when you are not faithful. Yes. He says, my faithfulness and my mercy shall be... We are declaring in the name of Jesus yes. that every day of your life, yes. let the faithfulness and the mercy of God yes. let it begin to come upon your life. Let it begin to come upon your life. Let it begin to come upon your life. Come on, lift up your voice. Declare. be conferred upon that is what the anointing does the anointing confers power and prosperity and I want you to pray it upon yourself that the power of God shall begin to work in your life that the prosperity of God shall come upon you 
I don't know about you, but when you operate in a certain dimensions of grace and authority, God says great power and great prosperity shall be conferred upon you. You are lifting up your voice. Yes. By the reason of the anointing. Yes. Let there be a release of power. Yes. Let there be a release of power. Release. Let there be a release of power. Release. Let there be a release of power. Release. Come on, lift up your voice right now. Shalabra Shalabai. Shante Sakados Kebe. Rapapana Brashana Brantala. Rapapana Brantala. on the rivers the tributes of Ephesus. Now he's talking about dominion. Somebody say dominion. dominion. Now I want you to say this prayer and that is a prayer I say almost I, I declare upon my life anytime I enter like any new town, any new city, any new area you declare dominion. Somebody shout dominion. 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 You declare that the Bible says wherever the soul of our feet shall tread you possess. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes. So any area where you 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 go, you shall possess. I and I want you to know you are going to possess. I yes. possess. I said you shall possess. I possess. possess. In that office you have dominion. Yes. In that organization you have dominion. Yes. I said to you, those of you watching online, get ready. I said we are coming to Mombasa very soon, and we get there we would we would dominate. Somebody say we will dominate. We will dominate. Oh yes. I'm telling you, you open a branch in Mombasa. Amen. And we would we will have influence. Amen. Yes. And divine acceptance. Amen. Shout, I receive it. I, I receive it. it. Prophetess, you can leave Tikal Road and go to Mombasa. Amen. Amen. See, pro oh, prophetess, I, or I take you to UK or America. Yeah. See, she's, you see the way she's receiving America. I said Mombasa, she was still standing there looking. <laughs> hey. Receive America in the name of Jesus. I receive, I receive it. it. Hear me? Shout, I have dominion. I, I have dominion. dominion. Can I tell you something? From today, nobody shall be able to ride over you. Amen. You will have dominion and influence everywhere you go. If you are there, shout, I receive. I receive it. When you have dominion, even your presence even begin to threaten people. 
wish I, I, I know how to say it in my mother tongue, but I don't know how to say it in your in Swahili or for you to make you understand. It's like just by your mere your, your mere presence, people begin to run away. Amen. They just pave way for you. Yes. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Yes. May God give you that kind of influence. I receive that kind of dominion. 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 I receive. If you are there, shout, I receive it. I receive in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Decree and declare. I, I decree and declare. I have dominion. I have dominion. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I influence. I influence. I have favor. I have favor. I have acceptance. I have acceptance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. By the power of the Holy Ghost. The, Holy Ghost. the hand of God is upon me. The, the favor of God is upon me. I dominate everywhere I go. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, Rabba Bala Grato, Nene Mesca Brata. Declare you have dominion. 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 Ala Bakosa, Ala Baya. Rabba Bala Grato, Nene Mesca Brata. Brata, Nene Mesca Brata. Brata, Nene Mesca Brata. Brata, Nene Mesca Brata. Brata, Nene Mesca Brata. Unto me, you are my father. Uh huh. Verse twenty-seven. I will make. Uh huh. Last week in the morning, we were praying a lot about our children. And um, during the morning prayers, last week morning prayers, we prayed a lot about children last week. If you didn't follow and you were sleeping, you are on your own. Yes. 
Now, we, were, we want to speak over our descendants. Somebody say, over our descendants. Over our descendants. Now, you are declaring in the name of Jesus. Yes. That the Lord shall establish your descendants. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. That the Lord shall establish your children. Amen. That his hand shall be upon them and his favor shall be with them. Amen. Amen. That God shall preserve and protect them. It is an error for you to succeed and your children fail. Are you getting me? Yes. Then there's no point. They represent you. You are declaring like on, 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 on Saturday when, when uh, we were doing the women's meeting. Uh, the women's meeting was powerful. How many of you were here? It was powerful. And we had a full house, like a full service. In fact, people were here more than this. Ladies got them. Because they want to know how to get a man. And keep a man. <laughs> So somebody asked a question. What if your husband or your man is smelling? How do you tell him without hurting him? And Florence gave a very intelligent answer. She says that if your husband is smelling, smelling maybe, maybe that means you, you are even smelling more. You are worse. Are you getting me? Yeah. I mean, she did very well. Come on, put your hands together for her. I like the way she executed the points. One after, I think I will create another session for you. You understand? Florence, are you listening to me? See the way she stands quietly like she cannot talk. <laughs> hey. You, you even speak it in Swahili. Next time that you give 30 minutes, you speak it in Swahili so that it comes deep. It was powerful. So, if you are succeeding and your children are failing, that means you are failing. Are you getting me? Yes. You want to tell the Lord, Father, preserve. Even if you don't have children. Last week I was saying in the morning, even if you don't have children, you are at a better advantage. Because you pray before they are, they are, they, you are praying for them before they are born. They get born. Amen? Yeah, so you are declaring over your unborn children, Father, cover them, establish them prosper them. Let them grow to become great men and great women. What you declare upon, upon your children becomes. Amen. Shout in the name of Jesus. In the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. I decree. I decree. According to Psalm 89. According, according to, to Psalm 89. 89 verse 29. Verse 29. My descendants, my descendants will be established, will be established, will be established forever. Forever. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Establish my descendants. Establish my descendants. Preserve my descendants. Preserve my descendants. Cover my children. Cover my children. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray. As I begin I release the cover of God, the, the protection of God, of God the protection over of our children. Come on, lift up your voice. Cabra sobra di, lema cobra ados kabaya, shelele brandos kabra tanalaya, shelele leka bandos kabra saka, rante ne 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 kabra takaria bakosa kaya, iye ya la bazona, rapa pala braska la la la.
Now we are taking your last but one prayer. You are declaring the name of Jesus. Yes. That may God give you an, an anointing in your field of operation. Amen. Somebody say an anointing. An anointing. For my assignment. For, for my, my assignment. assignment. I told you God can anoint you for anything. Samson was anointed to beat up people. How many of you know that Samson was anointed? What was Samson's anointing for? Did he heal the sick? No. Did he raise the dead? No. Was he a singer? No. He was anointed to fight. He was beating up people. When he lost his anointing, he could not beat anybody. They were now beating him. You can be anointed to do business. Yes. You can be anointed for your assignment. Amen. You are saying, Father, anoint me for my assignment. Amen. That office, give me a strange anointing. Yes. That you are there in the office and you are unique. Everybody is saying, why is this woman excelling like this? Mm. Why is this man excelling like that? Now, no one can touch you in your field of operation. Amen. Because you carry an anointing. Yes. Can I tell you something? Yes. You see, next week I'll make you understand. The Bible said, I have found my servant David. With whom I have anointed with my holy oil. Now, that scripture literally means that. Before the physical oil, I'm going to prove to you next week on that. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm excited about next week's service. Before the oil came upon David, spiritually, God had already anointed him. Yeah. No, are you getting me? Yes. Before the physical oil was poured upon David, spiritually, he says, I have found my servant David, with whom I have anointed with my holy oil. By the time Saul had not even anointed him. Mm. And someone, sorry, someone had not even anointed him. In other words, and, and, and when, when you read First Samuel chapter 10, when Samuel met Saul, Samuel says something. He says, has the Lord not anointed you in past tense? He had not just poured the oil upon him. He said, has the Lord not anointed you or selected you? In other words, before even Samuel poured the oil, Oil was already on his head. Amen. I pray for you, Kaduba yes. Lasahaya, the Grandus Pra Azute. Yes. Before even oil comes upon your head, yes. may Jehovah God select you for your next level. If you are here, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Read the scripture. He says, Read the scripture. Uh -huh. Then Samuel took the flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him and said, Has the Lord not what? Anointed. That was past tense. He didn't say, the Lord says, I am. I should anoint you. He said, has the Lord not already anointed you? So what Saul was doing, I'll prove to you next week, anything that was anointed, yes. they applied the oil to physically make that which has already been done in the spirit yes. manifest. Amen. Oh, are you getting hey, it? Hey, hey. So there was already an anointing upon so, so what Samuel was doing was bringing it into physical manifestation for the entire Israel to see there is something God has said concerning your life. Yes. And after this meeting, yes. there shall be a physical manifestation. I, I said there shall be a physical manifestation. There shall be a physical manifestation. I, I lift a prayer over your life yes. and I decree and declare yes. every word Jehovah has said, yes. every decree on your life. Yes. I I decree let it manifest. manifest. 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 In the name of Jesus.